And next we have Mark of the Line by Suzanne Uru Aruda. Ooh, girl, she gonna kill me. Okay, so anyway, I've been wanting to read this this book for a long freaking time. It, it's it's a mystery series, and this is the first book. It takes primarily in Africa. That's kind of the the whole setup and the dress of the series. It's an African based mystery series, but it does start um, in France in the beginning. So I, towards World War One, I, I want to say, and the main protagonist is a woman named Jade. She's an American who is an ambulance driver in, during the war and living in France. She ends up seeing her beau. I don't know how in the hell she did this. She managed to see his ass up in the air in, a, in an airplane, a, a fighter jet, but she saw him up there in a fighter jet get shot down and his plane crashed she got on the ambulance, ran over to him, and pulled him out of the plane. But the plane crashed, but she pulled his ass out of there. And he ends up giving her this necklace in which he's, you know, his last dying wish is for her to find his missing brother who is in Africa. And... Yeah. So, listen. Mark of the Lion was a good book. I thought it was good. The reason I labeled it as bad was because it suffered so bad from the middle you know the middle slump the middle slump it, it, it had a middle slump in the book um really i just kind of got bored with it in the middle of it at the beginning it was very action filled even though that fighter plane issue was questionable and debatable and a whole bunch of other edibles in it it was really fun at the beginning and then at the end it got a little bit more interesting but that middle part was just like girl if y'all don't get y'all ass out of Africa or either go do something then I'm just like I was just totally bored but I think the reason that I'm gonna continue reading that series is because I do like um uh, Susanna, Suzanne's main protagonist, Jade. Um, Jade knows how to fix cars. She knows how to shoot a rifle. You know, that's my thing right there. And she really just has an intelligence when it comes to animals in Africa. And you know, that all that information is rolled up into that also. So, I will go ahead and move on to the second book. So it's not so bad, but it was kind of bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're gonna try the next book and see how she works. If she don't work, then she going to the library donation pile. Uh, and another book that is definitely going to the donation pile at the public library is Amy Come Home by Barbara Michaels. Ooh. Oh, damn. Have you ever had a book that you've been wanting to read for so long and you finally order it, you finally get it, you finally read it, and your ass is just like, really? Let me tell you what this is about because really, I don't want to talk about it, okay? Okay? Amy Come Home is about a woman named Ruth who's living in a house with her uh, her niece, Sarah. Sarah is 20 years old. She's currently a college student. She's going to school in the area. And she has her little boyfriend who was just trifling and sorry to me, but he was there. He was there. Her little boyfriend was there in the mix of everything, trying to control her basically more than the ghost. Okay, uh, let me back up, let me back up. What, what happens in Amy Come Home is that the woman named Ruth that I just mentioned, she ends up conducting a seance in her home. Um, with some individuals and a medium, of course. The medium supposedly opens up the gateways of the spirit world, and here arrives a ghost who decides to possess Ruth's 20-year-old niece, Sarah. As you can guess, the ghost's name is Amy. Later, they figure that out as they go about, you know, investigating this issue. There are no words for how dumb this book was. Like, I don't, I don't even want to talk about this book. I thought it was going to be so good. I thought it was going to be so scared. But really, I just got a freaking headache from the characters. All they did was bicker and fight with one another. There was Ruth. There was Sarah. There was Sarah's boyfriend, who I just mentioned, who just get, who, ooh. And then there was um, Sarah's professor, who was also in the mix. Basically, the book boiled down to how do you separate paranormal activity from psychological activity so to speak and the characters were just based, basically like I said bickering back and forth between what was real and what was you know, all made up in the mind and at the end of the day there was a damn body up under the house and it was just really disappointing like this book was just disappointing all around and the funny thing about it is that Barbara Michaels is actually the pen name for Elizabeth Peters, as I mentioned earlier. So, with that being said, but Miss Barbara Michaels would not get another damn coin from me. I would not drop another dollar for a Barbara Michaels book again. No, ma'am, no God, no way. Now, let's move on to the ugly. Get 
get a good look at this book. You need to get a good look at it now because it's about to go. Okay, so I did a haul of this book last summer and I just now got decided to read it. Because basically what I'm doing instead of buying books, I would read from four I read a book, pick up a book from four my four different bookshelves, and I read a book, and then maybe if I get to like five books, I'll order two more. There was a reason why I didn't it took me a year and a half to get to this book because I didn't finish it. Like I got 43 pages in this book and I was like, you know what? My mind does not need to be bleached right now. I, well, I refuse to bleach my mind at this point. Well, first let me go ahead and just let you know that it is it is an urban fantasy book. It is a series. It's about a woman named Eddie. She is a nurse. She works in a secret ward in the underneath the hospital. In this ward, she treats paranormal and supernatural creatures such as vampires and zombies and dragons dragons and bullshit let's keep rolling and one of her patients who is a human sir listen to this he's a human servant but he bites her like a vampire and when she accidentally kills him he turns into dust like a vampire so like what I was like what is it like why didn't you just say he was a damn vampire like I didn't understand that part but anyway, she kills this man on accident because, you know, she's a nurse and she's trying to do her job, which basically she needs to take her ass back to school if you ask me. So before he dies, he asks her, can she save Anna? You know, you know how mystical it is. Like, save Anna. He, you know, he about to die. Save Anna. Would you save Anna? I would have been looking at him like, hell no, I ain't finna save Anna. But anyway, this girl decides to look through his pockets and find a pocket watch. And in the back of the pocket watch is a picture. Somehow, I don't even remember the events, she ends up going to his apartment. In his apartment, she finds speculative and confusing pictures of young girls in compromising positions with vampires or something like that. Girl, I was, I, at that point, I was already about to die with, with boredom. And somehow, this leads her to another location in which she actually finds Anna. Anna is in a vampire's den. She's chained up. She's chained up by, listen to this, y'all, listen to this, listen to this. Anna is chained up by vampires, right? So this lady named Eddie, I forgot the nurse's name, her name is Eddie, she decides to throw holy water on one of the vampires and burn him, and then the other one got away. So when she proceeds to rescue Anna, who is chained up by vampires, remember she chained up by vampires, when she proceeds to rescue Anna, how come Anna bite her like a vampire? But she was a vampire too. What? Why? Like, I don't understand that. But anyway, Anna ends up biting her hand. And so, Anna jumps off. She jumps ship. She get away. Didn't nobody care about her anyway. Bye. After Anna ends up running out, Eddie takes a camera that's located in the vampire den. What she does with this, listen to this, y'all. What she does with this camera is she takes the film out and burns the film, but take the camera. <laughs> oh, my God. This, you fool like why don't you die like you just need to go ahead and die you just go so we cannot use you and so Eddie goes to the hospital now let's listen to this Anna and Eddie goes to the hospital to get her hand treated but while she's in the cab she calls her brother now listen her brother is a drug dealer well I won't say he's a drug dealer but he's, he's a drug addict Early, earlier scenes showed that her brother likes to call her persistently to ask her can she please um, loan him some money so he can get some drugs right so she, before she signs into the hospital to get her hand treated which is not an overnight experience by the way she should know that as a nurse she gives her she asks her brother to meet her at the hospital her brother meets her at the hospital and what does she do she said here take the keys to my apartment and watch over my cat and watch over my stuff your brother is a drug. Your brother's a drug addict. Didn't you just got into an argument with him er in earlier chapters in which he asked you for some money and you told him no, but you getting checked into the hospital for not an overnight experience just to get stitches in your hand and you giving him the keys to your your apartment? What you think he gonna do? Remember when I was telling you about the camera that Eddie decided to take the film out and then take the camera, burn the film, the evidence, and then take the camera? So what she does, besides giving the um, keys to her apartment to her uh, drug addict, addicted brother, she gives him the camera and she says, go pawn this camera. <laughs> really? 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 Your brother is, first you killed, you, first you destroyed the evidence related to saving Anna. Secondly, you gave your drug addicted brother the actual camera, which is further evidence. 
told him to pawn it and gave him the keys to your apartment. So when she leaves the hospital after getting her hand stitched, she comes home to find some of her furniture missing. And then she had the nerve to get mad at her brother and kick him out of her house into the cold. He's homeless, by the way. So yeah, like, that, do y'all want me to start that book again? No, I'm not showing that book again. That book got to go. I just got a headache. It, it looks like I talk better. It looks like I can explain better to my books I do not like, but I got 43 pages in. I was like, you know what? I don't own a revolver. I don't like taking sleeping pills, so I have to I have to survive. Like this is the walking dead at this point. I'm not about to blow my brains out over a book. So with that being said, that is all that I have for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe, and stay away from any of these books that you just heard me talk about that are bad. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because if you do it and you write me about it, bye.